We have seen that the polarization of a nonlinear material can be written as a series expansion in terms of the electric field. The higher the order, the more intense the electric field has to be to observe those effects. The first term describes linear optics, reflection, refraction, snazz law, polarization, and so on. For the second term we have seen the parametric down conversion, where an incident photon of frequency omega is transformed into two photons of frequency omega half by interaction with the nonlinear medium. These two photons can be entangled and can be used for quantum key distribution. If a third party, Charlie, generates these two entangled photons and sends one to Alice and the other to Bob, Alice and Bob can measure them and their results will be correlated from where they can generate a secure key. We have also seen that two photons of frequency omega can be transformed into a single photon of frequency 2 omega by interacting with the nonlinear medium. This is the second harmonic generation. For example, the second harmonic generation can be used to make blue pointers. These small semiconductor lasers that are actually infrared. We don't have a semiconductor gain medium that emits photons in the blue. But these infrared photons through second harmonic generation at a nonlinear material are combined to generate twice the frequency and create a blue laser. But there are other processes, other nonlinear processes that can happen that depend on the second term of the series expansion of the polarization. We can also have some frequency generation where two photons of different frequency can be combined in the nonlinear medium to produce a third photon whose frequency is the sum of the incident ones. This can be used for single photon detectors. We have good single photon detectors in the visible range, but we do not in the infrared. If we can change the frequency from the infrared to the visible, this would allow us to detect single photons in the infrared. There is also the inverse process, where an omega-1 photon, which is the sum of omega-2 plus omega-3, is incident in a nonlinear medium, a photon omega 2 and a photon omega 3. For these cases, by rotating the nonlinear medium, so we are rotating the symmetry of the medium, we can change omega 3 and continuously change the frequency. This can be used to make a tunable laser. If we Include the third order term of the expansion, we can have third order effects like the third harmonic generation, where three omega photons are combined to generate a three omega photon. Of course, this effect happens for very few of the photons, and we always have the incident omega light. This implies that the amount of energy that we need to put to generate the 3 omega photon is quite high. Other nonlinear effects that can happen are that the nonlinear material induces a phase modulation in the incident wave. But also, the interesting phenomena of having an index of refraction that is dependent on the intensity. And not is the real part of the linear index of refraction but for high irradiance, we can see that the index of refraction begins to depend on that incident irradiance, where N2 is related to chi3. When an electromagnetic wave is incident on a nonlinear material, it makes the electrons oscillate. This, all these nonlinear optics phenomena come from the fact that the potential that the electrons feel when they are forced to oscillate because of an external oscillating electric field is non-symmetric. If the electric field is of low intensity, the electrons would be at the bottom and the oscillation will be symmetric, giving us linear optics phenomena. 
if the intensity is large enough then the non-symmetric part of the potential plays a key role and we start to observe the non-linear optics effects. May science be with you.